Hey friends, Kevin here, and in the three or four years that I've been messing around doing this, I've met a lot of people who started out trying to do van life full time, or who started out just trying to really adventure a whole lot, and it didn't work out for them. So we're going to talk about the main reasons that these people just quit doing van life. Let's get to it. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're in a minivan or whether you're in a, a cargo van that you've done a conversion on and you've turned into a camper van. It's the same thing with all of these. And number one is going to be being underfunded. Not having enough money. Now, this is important enough that I did a separate video on this, and I'll link these related videos down in the description if you want to watch those and get a little more information, because I want to keep this video kind of short. But basically, not having enough money <laughs> will end your trip, will end your dream if you get out and you're trying to go across country and just wing it and hope for the best. Because the first major repair or, heaven forbid, accident that happens, you no longer have a vehicle and you no longer have a house if you're trying to do this full time. And you don't have the funds to replace this with. So you have to have an emergency fund. And in this video I did, I go over based on what you have in your van that you've converted for van life, exactly how much you need for an emergency fund. So preferably you'll have that before you hit the road, but in the worst case scenario, you're putting money away every month to get it built up to the proper level to where you can solve the problems that come up. Number two, driving too much. Now this is a mistake a lot of people make in the beginning and they jump out and they start this and they want to bounce across the country in five days and then they want to bounce up into the northwest or northeast in two days and bounce back. They're burning a lot of money. Also, nobody got into this to be driving six or eight or ten hours a day. Man, if I'm driving eight hours a day, I expect to be getting paid for it. That's a job at that point. So what happens is people burn through a lot of money, they're not enjoying what they're doing, and they decide that this stuff simply isn't for them because they're not having any fun with it. They're not seeing anything. They're not putting themselves in a position of being somewhere for days at a time and, and relaxing. They're just riding down the interstate. And while this may seem like common sense, so this and some of these other things, you would be amazed at the number of people that do it. And I can tell you, I kind of did the same thing starting out, if I'm being completely honest. One of the things that's changed for me compared to when I started is I traveled way too fast. More distances in a day per day than I really wanted to. So my rule now when I'm out, I don't want to be on the road more than about two hours a day. There is... You know, my job, what I want to do is to stop and explore and see things in small towns and abandoned stuff and meet people. And, you know, I don't want to skip 500 miles at a time. And even if I've been on that same stretch of road before, there are other places that I haven't stopped. Other things that are 15 miles off the beaten path that I haven't seen. So slow that pace down. When you hit somewhere that you like, spend more time there. That will make your trip more enjoyable. You'll also burn a lot less fuel, which means you're going to spend a lot less money. Number three, people quit because they have bought the wrong vehicle. Now, there are people that look at us and that have minivans and they'll go, man, I could never do that in a minivan. And there are people in many that look at other vehicles and go, man, I can never do that in blah, blah, blah because of this. You've got to figure out what's, what's going to satisfy your comfort level. Now, if you've watched other videos of mine, you know I'm in, in a, a situation where I actually have both types of vans. I have a minivan and I have a really large van. And they're different. They suit me for different types of travel depending on where I'm going. 
And I had someone ask me in the comments, you know, how do I decide which one that I'm going to take on a trip? And quite honestly, I pick wrong sometimes. And I'm out in one of them and I'm like, oh, I wish I brought the other vehicle. And, but I'm going to tell you what it generally amounts to. But again, this is what has to suit your type of travel. A larger van is going to consume more fuel. It's going to be more to work on. It's going to be harder to park, and it's going to be harder to take into, into just odd areas if you're out exploring. Now, if you're the type of person that goes out and you jump off and you find a campground and you're there for a week, then I understand you want that larger van as large as you can get, and you know you want the comfort and you want you, you want those things because you're you're sitting there for a week at a time. That's not my way of traveling. My way of traveling is going and exploring and hitting back roads and and hitting cemeteries and finding abandoned stuff and going into small little dinky towns that have little, narrow little one-way streets. And in the larger van, that makes that harder. I mean, sometimes it makes it impossible for me to go places. There's times that I have been out and I've wanted to jump off the road somewhere and I couldn't do it in the big van to take a picture of something or look at something just because I was afraid I would get stuck. Whereas in the minivan, it wouldn't have been a problem. And I've just passed it up and, and gone on to the next thing I wanted to see. So these things do come into play though. I've met people on the road that just, they're, they're kind of, they're happy doing this when they start out but then they're not happy with their vehicle. And if you're not happy with the vehicle, then you're not going to be happy doing this and you're just going to throw in the towel. So make sure that you have something that's going to meet, meet your requirements. Number four. What is number four? I have a note here somewhere. What is number four? Family obligations. As people get older, they have different things they have to deal with. Sometimes, even though you may have grown children, and then there's grandchildren. Some people just aren't going to be able to stand to be away from their grandchildren. Sometimes there's going to be something going on in their children's lives that they need to go and handle or help with. Sometimes it's an issue where we have parents and we have something we have to deal with with parents. And I had this with my own mother before I started doing this. So I understand these situations come up. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no reason for anyone to feel bad if they have to stop doing van life or stop doing their traveling kind of and go and take care of one of these, these issues, a family issue. And it may be something that turns into a year or two years, whatever. The thing is, though, you don't have to throw in the towel completely. You just have to work it in. Maybe you work it in with shorter trips or going shorter distances in order to handle that, that family obligation that comes up. So it's one of those things. It's just another problem in life, and life is nothing but problem solving. Number five, health issues, your own health issues. Things happen. There are people who do van life, who do RVs, whatever it is that they're doing. There are people that pass away on the road. Personally, I would be okay with passing away on the road rather than passing away at a home where, you know, if I wasn't happy there and I was happier being out. But that's, that's just a personal thing. But the fact is we have to deal with that and we have to deal with health issues. And some people have more serious health issues than other people do, or you just wake up one day and you have a health issue that you're going to have the rest of your life that maybe you didn't have before. So these things do come up, and sometimes these issues are so severe that they do pull people off the road. Another thing that affects people when they're trying to do van life is sometimes they don't quite understand how physical it's going to be until they get out there. Now, there's a lot of things you can do to offset this. And one thing is by using a very simple build and only having with you what you really need. Things that I talk about on this channel all the time. But I see people, and I've met people before on the road, who have health problems, they're in really bad shape physically, and they've put themselves in a situation where they're trying to run a household and have all the things they had in their house, 
and do it out of a van, and you just can't do it. So they're in a situation where they are having to set up every time they stop somewhere and tear down when they get ready to leave, and they've made this more work than it is for people who have those 40-foot RVs, which is one of the reasons I don't want one of those. I don't want to do all that work every time I stop or every time I start to travel again. But you see people that have this and they, they stop and they don't have any room and they've got to pull everything out of the bed and they've got to fight the weather and, you know, they they take some 30 minutes to make their bed and, you know, they have all this stuff sitting outside the van and they're just not physically able to do this. And if they don't quickly figure out a simpler way to do this and do van life, in their minivan or cargo van or whatever it is they're traveling in, they're going to have a really hard time, they're going to get disgusted, and they're going to quit. And unfortunately, that happens a fair amount. And that brings us up to numero six, which is something that is going to apply to couples. Those of you solo won't have an issue with this, but you may still be interested in this because even if you're single, you may meet somebody out there that you don't want to be single anymore. But here's what happens is you have couples and one of them is all gung ho and committed to van life. And this is their dream. And the other one isn't the other one's just going along for the ride for whatever reason, because they, it just doesn't interest them. It isn't what they want to do. And this isn't just, again, with full-time van life. This can be the same thing even on long trips. And by long trips, I'm talking about being gone for a month or two. I understand the hope is that, you know, once I'm on the road, my mate here is, is going to fall in love with this stuff as much as I do. That's not always the case. Your mate may not love the desert as much as you do. Your mate may not love waking up on an 18 degree morning as much as you do. In this, when you're in this situation, there's really only one thing to do. Get rid of your mate. Okay, maybe that's not the only thing to do. I think we can work around that a little bit. But the thing is, if your mate doesn't love this stuff, to the level that you do, you need to accept that. Don't blame them, don't hate them, but most of all, don't think you're going to change them. So what you're going to need to do, if you're going to keep your mate, is you're going to have to adjust the way that you're doing things. And maybe you can get them involved with some shorter trips in the right climate, in the right areas, and being able to do things that they would they would enjoy. Maybe they enjoy seeing little towns and doing shopping where you enjoy being in the same place in the woods for four days at a time. So you're going to have to figure out how to resolve these conflicts. The other thing, quite honestly, is you may end up having to do some of this stuff alone with the maid at home and you out doing your thing. People do this all the time. There are people who you know, depending on where you're from, you may not understand this, but there are people that go out, you know, they have the week or two week hunting trip with their buddies every fall or whatever. So it's not uncommon for people to do, that are in a relationship, to do their own thing for a while. I'll leave that up to you, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or whatever, but it happens, and this may be one of the situations for doing van life where you would need to do the same type of thing. But I can tell you, I've met a lot of people on the road, you know, guys who have their wife or whatever at home, and I've met women on the road who go out for a month or two at a time sometimes, and their husband is at home. You know, that generally tends to be older people, and they've been married 30, 40 years, and they just understand each other and each other's differences, and they go along with it, and they do their thing, and that works out works out fine for them. But with all these things I've discussed, I'd love to hear your opinions. Put a comment down below what you agree with, what you don't agree with. Are there other things that you've seen 
that's caused people to quit van life maybe that you know or that you've met along the way in your adventures. I have some good stuff coming up, some stuff that I know a lot of you have wanted as far as how I find places, you know, the places I'm going to camp for the night or how I find places to explore while I'm on the road. So there's going to be videos coming up on that. There's going to be videos on exactly the process I use when I buy my vehicles. I'll go through the ones that I've already bought, the vans and some other things on how I deal, whether I'm dealing with a car dealership or whether I'm dealing with a private party that's selling a vehicle and Craigslist and Facebook and, and all of these places that, that it's possible to buy cars from, vans from. Again, if you have a good idea for a video, something you would like to see me cover, never hesitate to put that down in the comment section too, and we'll talk soon.